Welcome back, Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God podcast. Episode 15 today, having healthy expectations. So what are expectations and why do we need to work on them? Well, recently, folks, I did a podcast on the path to recovery. I called it Setting Boundaries. So expectations kind of work hand in hand with setting boundaries. Setting healthy expectations is like setting boundaries that keep us safe. How we keep ourselves safe regarding what we expect from others and ourselves is pretty important. In fact, just as important as the boundaries are. So let's take a look at what unhealthy expectations might look like. Give you some examples. An infant or maybe a young child is struggling with using the potty. And can we expect them to know how to pee in the toilet without teaching them and without teaching them consistently? So our expectation would be failed if we're thinking, okay, this is the first time we try to show them how to pee in the toilet and they pee all over the floor. If we expect them to pee in the toilet, we set our expectations a little too high. Maybe somebody's consistently breaking promises with us. So do we keep asking them to do things for us if we know that they're breaking promises? Maybe if someone's always late for work, can we expect them to be on time for us? What if somebody hits people? Can we expect them not to hit us? Or maybe someone who consistently drives unsafely, gets into a lot of accidents. Are we going to be expecting them to drive us around safely? How about a child that never puts their toys away? Can we expect them to keep their bedrooms clean? Or maybe a friend who treats other friends poorly and backstabs and talks about them all the time. Can we expect them to be honest and caring with us? We have to understand that it is us that needs to change, not those people that appear to be, you know, letting us down. They'll let us down, but the only reason they'll let us down is because we have set expectations for that to happen. If we continue to keep the same expectations with someone, yet at the same time we know they have like these tendencies of behaviors or thought patterns that seem to kind of let us down, then we're actually setting ourselves up for the disappointment. Again, it is not them. So safe expectations or healthy expectations get to alleviate those hard moments of feeling let down. So check this out. Here's a couple examples of some healthy expectations. Sue's rarely on time. I better not count on her to arrive on time for this dinner. Makes sense, right? If I don't expect Sue to be on time for the dinner, she gets here when she gets here. Everything's good. But if I'm insisting that she shows up at 8 o'clock and it's 8.10 and I'm flipping out, well, guess what, folks? That's my issue. Kevin seems to get angry at the smallest of things. I better not expect him to be calm when I tell him his check bounced. How about, I better try another method of teaching my son how to use the potty. He really isn't doing well with that whole floating target in the toilet thing. Change the method, folks. Change how you're doing something so that the expectation can be more attainable. I can't count on Rebecca to follow through with our meeting. I better get a backup plan for this, just in case. Or, hmm, Alan didn't call again. Maybe next time, I'm not going to count on him calling when I ask him to. Or Steve and Sherry, they left without paying their bill again. What is it with them? Well, maybe it's time to stop going out with them. Or how about this? Paul keeps asking me to do things last minute. I mean, seriously, Paul, I may have to tell him to stop asking me because I keep changing my life for his needs and I can't emotionally afford to be stressed. I'm going through hard times as it is. I don't need more stress. Or maybe it's, I think it's time to leave this area. Everybody keeps asking me to get high and they all know I'm working on being clean and sober. I can't expect them to stop, so I've got to actually change something about me and being here is probably what needs to change. Or maybe even something as simple as, you know what, I guess I have to make a game out of cleaning up so that my son Josh can begin learning how to pick up after himself. You know, if I turn it into a game, maybe he'll be more interested in it. So I have a phrase that's called setting the bar too high. That's where we go wrong, folks. Think about someone who wants to hike the summit of Mount Everest, but yet at the same time, they're not even hiking. They, they don't even walk. They barely walk down the street to get their mail. So don't you think that that expectation of them going to hike Mount Everest is a little too high? So setting the proper expectations is kind of what we need to focus on. 
not removing the expectations. We don't want to eliminate expectations. Therefore, we'd never count on anybody for anything. The reality is, folks, is we have to set proper expectations. If we expect someone to do something when we know full well that they won't, that is on us, not them. So properly set expectations for the things that you know people around you will tend to behave like. If we see unhealthy trends with the expectations, in other words, we kind of expect people to do this and they keep kind of letting us down, that's an unhealthy trend. We need to adjust and adapt to the true outcomes and stop playing games with our own emotions. We need to value our emotions and how we feel more than expecting someone to do something that they just can't do or something that they don't even want to do. If we do nothing, we're never going to see change. And folks, probably one of the hardest things to do is commit to our expectations and not be pulled back into the giving up or being disappointed. And it's sometimes hardest to create more healthy expectations with those people that we love or care about. But it can be where we need it the most. As we tend to, as humans, we tend to relax and allow for kind of unhealthy results, especially when it involves family, loved ones, or friends. We give them slack. We let them off the hook. Just like setting the boundaries, expectations require long-term commitments as well. And it does require a lot of work, especially if we want them to stick. Folks, it's like we're training ourselves to do something repetitively. So in order to do that, it's gonna take time and practice. We're gonna to have to really work on setting those expectations. So when we do all the work, how do we know when we're done? Are we gonna be successful because we have a numbering system? No, essentially take a look at this. When our child finally pees in the toilet and not on the floor because we actually changed our expectations, maybe we changed a different approach to having them pee in the toilet, it lessens the pressures of them doing it and then we actually get to be enjoying that elation and the, and the joyous moment of their success with them. As ugly as it seems, we, there's a chance we may upset a lot of people in the process of setting our own healthy expectations because we're going to be changing how we behave. And folks, it's really tough for our outside relations to adapt to our changes. That's when you're ultimately gonna know who your true friends are. Those ones that stick with you through the hardest of times or through your major changes and shifts. Those are gonna be the people that are gonna be with you in your life for a long period of time. Knowing that we're successful, we can actually have less arguments and more calm discussions with people. If you find that things are going a little smoother for you, if you don't have anxieties built up as much, there's a possibility that your expectations in life have adjusted to proper levels. Maybe you'll have more confidence in the things that you ask of others. You know, so set that expectation properly and say, you know what? I don't expect you to accomplish this, but you know what? If you do something, that's going to be fantastic. So you'll have more confidence in them. And ultimately, guys, there's a good chance we're going to find a whole lot more moments of peace, tranquility, and less stress, less aggravation, less letdowns or disappointments. Having healthy expectations is like relieving you of pressures and stresses. So it's a good thing. All right, folks, thank you very much for listening in. I know it's kind of a short podcast, but it's an important piece. This and your boundaries are critical for your healthy behaviors and your healthy life. Thank you very much, folks, for listening in. I hope that you tune into the other podcasts. God bless you, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you again for listening in today, everybody. Your time and energy is greatly appreciated. Please feel free to download these episodes, favorite them, share them, and even visit my YouTube channel, Yavacoco Productions, for all of my podcasts with their playlists as well, and for some insanely cool videos of Sedona from my hikes or just from other connections that I've had. That all helps me continue to bring you more exciting podcasts about hiking Sedona. For those of you wanting to dig in a little deeper, maybe you're struggling with some inner issues or are in recovery from addictions or just looking for inspirational discussions about healing, check out my other podcasts on your favorite podcast players. Things like Path to Recovery or Cognitive Awareness with a Touch of God or Star Wars The Bear Awakens. Yeah, I actually do a podcast about that. It's a little deeper than just a Star Wars podcast, folks. 
it gets into a little more connecting with the concept of what is the force and what is it compared to the guide consciousness. We're just here to help and what we offer is almost always free. Thank you, God bless you, and hope to see you on the rocks.